about Christian life in terms of an athlete or the runner or uh, and the boxer. Now, no Christian, no true Christian, I must say, can approach the Christian life uh, with just a shady or a flabby attitude. No genuine Christian uh, can indulge the body and its lusts and expect to win the incorruptible crown of the Christian life. Are you praying with me? Corinth was known for the, what you call the instant uh, games, which were second only to the Olympic games of the Grecian and Roman world. Therefore, everyone in the Corinthian church knew the point Paul was making. Maybe today I can allude it to the Super Bowl, but today it is called what? Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> Super Bowl Sunday, which have some of us now looking at. I see some laughing, so I'm saying. Yes. 
Only one received the prize. And there's only one winner. But the believers enter the Christian race for one purpose only. And that is to win for a strain in running to obtain the prize. And nothing is acceptable as a running and running hard. Walking is unacceptable. Jogging is unacceptable. Lagging behind because you're tired and don't feel like running today. Unacceptable. But showing little concern for the finish line is unacceptable. But one must continue to run the race and to not give up but to endure to the end. But I hear that the race is not given to the strongest. Not to the fastest. But it's given to the one that endured to the end. I have a mind to run on. But we must run as diligent as the runner at the Olympic game. For we as believers must put out the same kind of vigorous effort in order to reach the finish line. But we must be vigorous and diligent. We must persist in the Christian race. But Galatians 5, 7 says, He did run well. Who did hinder you? That you should not obey the truth. There are things out there that are trying to distract us from running this race. They're trying to pull us up on the sideline. Paul said, I press toward the mark for the pride of the high calling in Christ Jesus. In other words, my mind is made up. My heart is fixed But the more you talk, I ain't gonna get mad at you. I ain't gonna talk about you. I'm gonna stay on my knees. In other words, I'm gonna pray for you. The more you talk about me, I'm gonna love you more. The more you hate me, I'm gonna do good to you. We also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. He says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us. And let us draw with patience the rays that it is set before us. 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8 says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all of them uh, that love his appearance. So don't think this crown thing. It's just words that the Lord wanted to just throw in the Bible uh, to help fill it up. But the crown uh, is a real thing. I heard somebody say uh, said that I don't, want, I don't need all that. I just want to get in. I just want to slide in. But I tell you, slide in into heaven uh, is better than sliding into hell. But I do all that the Lord has.
church and just holler hallelujah and go to work, go to school, or go by our day to day doing and doing what we want to do, pleasing ourselves and not in doing the cross that God has before us. So we as believers, it's strenuous discipline and controlling of oneself. The every runner and boxer is highly disciplined. They're highly disciplined in body. They're highly disciplined in mind. They're highly different in, uh, disciplined in thought. They're highly disciplined in spirit. They're highly disciplined in the workout and exercise. Highly disciplined uh, in the contest that they are training for. They are disciplined in body of what they eat and how much they eat. They're, different, they're, they're disciplined in mind and thought for their concentration on the goal and how to best gear their body and spirit and mind to that end. They're disciplined in spirit in keeping their spirit strong and motivated for the strain necessary to work out day by day and to reach that goal. I'm just trying to tell you today, church, that we as Christians, we have to be disciplined enough just like an athlete. But we have to know the goal that we're trying to reach. That it's not an arbitrary goal that's out there. For our goal is to make heaven our home. Our goal is to please Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Our goal is to reach a dying world for the Lord. Our goal is to be obedient, obedient unto the Lord. We are to do no less than the athlete, but we must be just as disciplined. The word in the, in the scripture says strive. Strive means agony. It says they discipline themselves to the point of pain. Yeah. The discipline covers all things. Yeah. It covers his body. It covers mind and spirit. It covers the place where God's presence yeah. actually dwells. They fall and not allow anything to touch or enter the body that is corrupt. The impure, polluted, or what we'll call a more rapid deterioration of the temple, we seem to allow anything to enter us and to cause corruption in our lives. We don't care, as James said, what comes out of our mouth. We can bless God with one breath, and with that same breath, curse God. We have to be more disciplined than that. We have to be able to say, Lord, I'm crucified with you. Uh, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live this life by the faith of the Son of God who died and gave himself for me. Jesus understands the world that we live in. He understands how hard it is. He understands how tough it will be. But I heard him say that he went up all the way. I heard him say that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. I heard him say that he's with us. 
Well, I'm in this crowd now. Then you forget what crowds are. <laughs> Then you begin with cross skin. <laughs> we, we have no control. We have no relationship with Jesus Christ. The better our relationship, our relationship is with the Lord, the better our relationship is with the Lord, the more self-control, the more temperate we are. If we have no temper, if we don't keep our temper in check, we'll be going off on folks all right. and causing all folks around us to stop. And that goes from, from the preachers, pastor, all the way back to the ushers. And all the time. Our relationship is in check. We will not be able to keep our temple in check. Jesus Christ never lost control. He, our example. Somebody said, yeah, he was God. Yeah, he was. And he was fully man. Jesus Christ is his earthly man. Christ is a heavenly man. Jesus Christ, the name what his parents gave him by way of the Holy Spirit. But Christ is the name that his heavenly father gave him. Fully man. Fully Christ. Had total self control. Endured the cross. Felt every pain. Knew every backbiter in the crowd. And he said, Father, forgive me. Look at the temperance that I was. Look at the forgiveness. Held nothing against him. Yeah. But he knew that he had to be the one to die. He came to die for our sin. Mm -hmm. That we may be empowered to overcome sin yeah. through him. Now the Spirit of God lives in us. Those who have accepted him mm -hmm. as Lord and Savior. So there's no excuse now, for we have been saved from the penalty, from the power of sin. Yes. So when we sin now, it is by choice. Yes. We can't put it on nobody. We can't put it on they. They. It is you that made that choice, made that decision. Don't let anyone make you lose your temper. Keep your temper in check. Father, son, daughter, single parent, single person, children, no matter who you are, keep your temper in check. But there's going to come a day when we all going to stand before our maker. And when we stand before him, in other words, we're going to die one day. Life, life will leave out of this body. Out of this, your body, life will leave out. One day, we are going to breathe your last breath. Could be tonight, today, tomorrow, next week, could be 10 years from now, 15 years from now, or even 100 years from now. But life will leave out of your mind. If it's 100 years, it is just a drop in the bucket compared to eternity.
church. And I guarantee you, you can count on one hand that 120 years ago, the amount of folks that still here, right. out of the millions of folks that we see, all, right. all, all of them stood before the Maker. Yeah. And when you stand before Him, you're going to leave this world just like you came. Yeah. But nothing. When you stand before me, and when you stand before him, don't, don't, don't start complaining, because he knew that we could make up when you had life. Yeah. Don't start blaming on us, because he knew you could make up when you had life. Don't stand blaming others. Said you didn't just want to have nothing to do with folks. Well, let me tell you something. Folks is what's most precious to God. If you want to get close to the Father, if you want to get close to Jesus, love folks. Do for folks. Be there for folks. Not just folks that can do something for you. Folks that can do nothing for you. Folks that can have nothing in, expect in, in expectation. You don't get close to the Father, but well, I go to church every Sunday. I'm a deacon, I'm a preacher, I'm a pastor, I hold, I hold a position in the church. That has nothing to do with it. You want to get close to the Lord? You want to grow in Him? Love our folks. Do like He did. Love Him, our love Thank you. 